certainty. When I use words like that, I don't mean the ultimate meaning like a lie is certain. I mean, in human being, as a human being, I'm certain that we're in a masjid here. I'm certain of that. I feel certain that our destiny here in America is going along in a certain track. I feel certain that the fall of Babylon was real, and I feel certain that the fall of the British Empire, the Roman Empire, and all the other empires that passed away, that they happened. And if you were a doctor and you studied the symptoms of uh, cancers and other uh, sicknesses, and you've seen a thousand patients with a certain uh, symptoms, and 990 of them died soon after those symptoms appeared. That's some kind of certainty we have with this. It's possible for America to something to happen. But as far as we feel, what do we have? We have here's some of the things we have. It's just a note to myself. I am thankful for our historical battle space. And I say I have some old song. Oh Mary, don't you weep? Pharaoh's army got drowned in the sea one day. I don't know if you ever remember that. Pharaoh's army got drowned in the sea one day. That's what our people all talked about. And uh, the story, Mary and her sister Martha standing at the church listening to the story. They're part of the white folks' church, and they tell them the story. Pharaoh's army got drowned in the sea one day. One of the greatest songs of the uh, Reconstruction and thereafter, it might have been back in slavery, go down Moses' way down in Egypt land, tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. <laughs> a lot of people don't know what they was missing. That period, those Negro people, I don't know. I think it was great. I think uh, that was love. Like, uh, I look at it as a great Negro historical party. Adam was there, Esau was there, Noah was there, Abu Bakr, people like that was there, and they all. You have the history, what I'm saying is just like you go to a great party and all those personalities, not the, the person himself, but their whole historical. You have access to all of their historical advice, and they're advising you. You may have the name of Abu Bakr, but you're not Abu Bakr, but you, have, you want to be like Abu Bakr. You see what I mean? You studied the characteristics of Abu Bakr. So you're not Umar, but everybody got those names. Those are people you studied their characteristics, their habits, their behavior. And you can model your behavior after theirs. They got this play right now, Hamilton. And the kids love it. They all in fact, Fatima and her class, all the kids went to see Hamilton last Friday or Thursday, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. down at the Kennedy Center. Yeah, because Jahari went. Huh? Uh, Abdul Latif's son went. Oh, okay, so, very good. Mm -hmm. But I tell my kids about that. There's two songs I like in it. I'm not going to blow my shot and rise up. Now the kids don't want to hear me give the truthful rendering about that, so I let them have it. You know. 
But Sakina is amazed because I asked her, uh, she's getting ready, used to be getting ready for a debate, debating team. And uh, this is a Roosevelt situation. I said, well, type in the good neighbor policy. What's that? I said, just type it in. That'll show you America's relations with the, the South America. It was Franklin Roosevelt's good neighbor policy. They had treated people so bad in Latin America that Franklin Roosevelt said, we're going to have a new policy. It's called the good neighbor policy. And we're going to try to act as a good neighbor, not messing up all your business. That was a good neighbor policy under Franklin Roosevelt. And I said, look up La Matanza. Types of La Matanza. Uh, Argentina, 1976. Not that one. La Matanza, 1932. And she's just amazed. How the hell? What did you get on? I said, don't worry about it. And then she types in La Matanza. The slaughter. That means to keep Mata, Matanza, the slaughter. I said, 1932. So I said, that's your American policy in Latin America and everything else. Anyway, <coughs> now Geronimo's going to be there too. And also Francisco Villa, yeah, that's why I was mentioning it. I just wrote this today, the 16th. And when I wrote 916, it didn't flash on me. But then on one of the pages I wrote September the 16th. I said, September the 16th is the day I wrote. Because you know when you're down in Mexico, you know, you pick up on all those signs. They don't celebrate Cinco de Mayo in Mexico. No, that's an American Mexican holiday. Not in Mexico, it's that holiday. They don't celebrate it. They celebrate DSSAs, uh, they September. In DSSAs, they October. And that's October. Anyway, Geronimo is going to be teaching you the ghost dance. Geronimo won't be asking you, because Geronimo will say you part into that. Say, yes, sir. You have any visions? Yes, I do. You have any bad ones? No. So you had a vision of getting on that train going somewhere a long way off, didn't you? Yes, I did. You don't have none of them? Not one. Only have good, optimistic visions. Have had one nightmare. Not one. So what does that mean? Emiliano Zapata, Villa, Bolivar, Simon Bolivar. We traveling in good company, that's all we're saying. This place might have been a wilderness 40 years ago when we talk about all this stuff years ago. It was different then. The white man don't, the Negroes, they don't, uh, they think like maybe, I'll give you an example. In 1987, when all this stuff to hit, this is the same time we're getting ready to crank up again, and uh, I'm telling out the Maliki, the police, and all that. We're, I know, we're, I know the same thing I know now. We're totally surrounded, and it's almost impossible to do something here in America. So I studied the whole environment, so I came here for a visit. I told Muhammad al out at the AEC. I'll tell you the same thing I told other people. It seemed like they wanted to do something. I said, you go on out in front, I'll get behind you and we'll fix, fix this joke. While I was doing it, I was looking around not paranoid, let's call it sensitive. So, maybe it's 20 years ago, 15, let's say 15, 8 years ago, I think. We're in uh, Amsterdam, and Muhammad is playing with me, saying, you think that man is watching us? They're 
trying to undermine a lot of the stuff we're doing now. This fool, I call him a fool, he's thinking, this is not, this is 1997, not 1987. He's thinking if you was <clears throat> juiced up then, we didn't have 10 years of work. And he's trying to institute a 10-year-old program. Maybe they're watching us. Ooh. You know what I mean? We clean as a whistle. Don't make no difference. What's the point? They didn't evolve. That's why the whole crew of all of them, that's why the United States government is missing every shot. Because they do not go along with the progress. And when they discover something, they don't think it's real. So wait a minute. We have a nigga. We can't scare him to death. We can't girl him to death. And we can't buy the nigga. They say power corrupts and absolute power absolutely corrupts. They believe in that. They also believe everybody has a price. The longer you hold out, the bigger you go. Man, we can give you pure heroin and pure cocaine. The sky's the limit. I can do this whole thing. And you get all the protection you want. We give you a little crew to help. You all dream. Your dream. Black control of its own love, its own everything. And you know what? The white man can't give you what he ain't got. And the greatest thing is to be grateful and thankful and appreciative. You know, about what Allah give you. When we read those uh, hadith on contentment, right? I've been very wealthy, and I know people that's been very wealthy, and I have seen none of them. I have never seen a content person. And I had never been content with those practices, practicing the stuff, not just reading it, that don't have love. Actually doing it where it costs you at first. When at first you are hopeful, you're very hopeful about all this, you know what I mean? You have faith. You expect something to happen, but there's no proof of it. That's faith. You have faith. Faith, hopefulness, optimism, all of those things are very good. But they're different than contentment. You have to do something, and then contentment is a reward for some, this is mine, of something that you do or you continue to do. You're contented with, you are happy with that. It's better, it's, it's better than happiness. I, I don't know if I actually know the difference between happy and contentment. I mean, I had to actually think about it. But I know the feeling that you get from this Islamic work, because they say if you work like this, you ain't going to never be broke. I done showed y'all paper after paper where the white man took this money. He took 25000 He took this. This one is 41000 Now, in the game, that's not much money. But in the, in the, in the, in the end of the rounds, that's a lot of money when you didn't have a whole lot of fights because most people don't have no money left. So even in this, I'm always planning for the end of the fight. That's why I never ran out of money. Can you imagine now? 
Even with us, we're getting ready to do so. We're going to pull out and we're going to fix everything. Whether equipped lightly or heavily, we're going forth, right? At the same time, less money come in in the boxes, less money come in everything. All of a sudden, right? Does it have an effect? Absolutely not. <laughs> so it changes or it evolves from hope. It evolves from uh, optimism. And it, it is the days of hope. In the early days, you like, uh, you know, this stuff about Jesus in the wilderness for 40 days before his mission, you know, and the devil to say, if you so hungry, why don't you have to turn that rock into some bread, right? Man don't live on bread alone, right? And the shaitan, what he do? He show up all the riches of the earth, right? That's it. All of those of the, this is all, he fastened, he hides a kite. But this is real. All of these are yours if you just follow me. Do you know? That's real. The white man tell you that. They told it to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You want to be, you like girl, we got all the girls in the tribe, man. There ain't no limit, the sky's the limit. Well, we're going to make you the richest out of all of us. You put the sun on the right and the moon on the left, I'm not going to turn away from the mission. Right? Moses was in the wilderness of Midian for I don't know how many years till his mission consolidated. What I'm trying to say is this. In the earlier years, we had our wandering in the wilderness too. We had to find exactly, you know, your mission don't just pop right in the, on the table, right? You almost got to work for it. You got to earn it. You got to go through changes for it. Those days are not days of contentment. Those are days that you have faith this is going to jump off like that. Yeah. You, you're hopeful. In the Quran, don't never give up hope. Don't never stop being hopeful. That's right. Those who give up hope are without faith. You don't have no faith. You don't have any man if you lose hope on a better day, a brighter future. Hope in the hereafter. The point I'm making is the prisons, the traveling around the world, all of that stuff is each person have their own type of wandering in the wilderness. Each person or each group of people have to face their own challenges, right? Before they go to the next level, that big step, when they get through that, that's the big jump. Now they're going, it ain't it's the big jump, but it's the hardest one. Because when you jump into that, all the questions are not answered, but the main questions are, so everything falls into a pattern. You don't have to struggle a whole lot because you've answered the main question between right and wrong, good and, and bad, truth and falsehood, hock and bottom, hock and bottom. And all your decisions now is based on what? You going with hock or you going with bottom? The longer you make the hot decisions, decisions, the easier they get. Then you get to the point of what we were talking about earlier, yakin, certainty. I'm talking about in human terms. So what do we have going for us? This battle space awareness. We have yakin, we have certainty. We have a whole historical pattern. Everything is on our side. The only thing they have on their side is people who are misguided. Wealth not used properly, actually wasted. With no blessings in it. They have all of that. And they lose it bad. And 
Now you got to imagine us at this period of time when we're going into, we say, okay, we're going to open. We're going to open up our masjid again. We're going to, we got to, you know, we're going to do our legal stuff, right? We've already won that battle. We don't have nothing that we have to do in order to, to, to prove to nobody. We are going to print booklets of all the, the paperwork <laughs> that we have, you know. Like I can sometimes I give y'all little pieces of things. Okay. Well, I'll have probably a booklet this stick on the paperwork against the people. We're going to win the case, but it doesn't make any difference whether we win the case or not. We've already done, we have become a model and example that you can stand, you got to remember now, we have already stood in the front of the system, in front of everybody. Just like what the people of Moses, the law said, you went after the calf, after you were standing there looking, that means everybody was watching. There has been no case in black history or nothing that is visible as this one was. None. It ain't none been talked about as much as this. It hasn't. There's nobody been arrested as much. There's nobody that's got the visible paperwork and the proof. Right? And there's no place you could go and you could actually see. You know what I mean? This is the point. Now you got to remember, the people <clears throat> have seen. Okay, now, that means we have done our part on that. That's where the contentment comes from. We have done our part, and for the next phase, with Allah's help, we're going to do that, but we feel comfortable about it. We feel that there's no other thing that could happen other than that. We feel that way because there's nothing we're going to do to alter our situation with thankfulness, gratefulness, love, kindness, and all of that. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're about. It's natural. We don't have to work at it. We don't have to train ourselves. Now, what other people do, that's their business. That's their business. The part they play with history.